Okay, here's the video I promised you. Micro portable painter versus the classic portable painter while traveling. Stay tuned. All right, 25 hours later because of the fire detours in Colorado, right at my house, by the way. It is freaky being across country when my house is so close to fires. But regardless, we're here, we're set up. I'll show you a little bit around while I'm talking about other things. And let's just get into this video because it was very interesting and I think you'll like it. Real quick, this footage is really jumpy, so I just wanted to warn you right now. I couldn't get anyone in the truck to hold the camera for me, so I had to put it on the tripod, attach it to the headrest, and it's bouncy because the road was really bouncy, so I'm really sorry. I hope it doesn't give you a headache. The second half of the footage isn't nearly as bad. We were on a bit of a smoother road, but I guess it's reality, huh? Just uh, bear with it if you can. I hope you can. We are starting out with the micro portable painter, and if you missed the video where I introduced this, I will link that up in the corner for you putting some water in there and getting started. And you can see the road is jumpy, so hang on. The water already spilled. No! Oh, wow. I tried not to fill it too full, but it fills really fast. And hey, did you know that you cannot paint something that you're looking at when you're traveling down the road at 70 miles an hour? Yeah, pretty common sense for most of us, so. Just thought I'd mention that. So the kid in the front seat, his name is Kyle. He took a picture for me of this little farmhouse and would show it to me once in a while. Box. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> You're playing with fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a few notes on this little micro portable palette. As some of you know, with plastic palettes, your paint will beat up until it really wears in or wears down. And this one does that same thing. The difference with this one is the plastic is a little softer maybe. I'm not really sure what the right terminology is, but when I pull my brush across it, it actually shows me the color of it really well. And sometimes with new plastic palettes, you pull your brush across it and it just beads the whole way. This one at least gives you that idea of what your color is going to look like, so that's nice. Also, the colors I chose here were really fun to work with. That red-brown was awesome. I really liked that. And I didn't have any trouble with the amount of mixing space there. What I did miss the absolute most was a clean water well. Oh, no, no, no. no bumps, no bumps, no bumps. Yep, the interstate's rough. Who knew? <laughs> oh, no. You don't need these gloves to not be wet, right? Not using them anymore. I should probably put them over there. What do you mean? That's, that's okay. the technique Tip one, painting on the interstate is going to be rough. Don't do it. All right, all right, all right. Let's do a background and call it good. This is scary. Tip two, no precision allowed. That is not the purple you want to do. That is. Tip three, have friends. Careful bump. Shizua. Whew. Good morning, thank you. Tip four, make sure your rag is clean. Ah, that's a terrible color. Yeah. Bad evil. No, oh, now it's all over that page, and I don't have clean water. I was just looking to see how to much. Clean it up. I don't even know if you can clean it up on this. Whoops, that was <laughs> doing good here. Tip five fake it till you make it, or something like that. We're gonna call that good. Alright, alright, alright. How do I show that? Uh, yeah, 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 okay. What? How did... How did... Now, now what am I supposed to do with the water? Windmill. <laughs> oh, there's the windmill. I could put that in, but... Windmill. But I, I'm under-motivated. Okay, okay, I'll put the windmill in. Good. Okay. Um, how do I do that? My brush is too wet. Let's see if you can keep entertaining us. Me? Huh? My brush is kind of big for a windmill. Crap. Crap. What? Ah, yeah, yeah. Ah. Don't worry, it won't take me long to paint it. I just don't know what it looks like without the picture. So yeah, keep holding it. <laughs> You can not hold it now. You're not supposed to drop. 
<laughs> this windmill looks more like a demented flower. Oh well. It's because my brush is so dang thick, but I can fix that with the liner because I can. And because straight lines aren't possible, I messed up the bottom and had to cover it with a bush. Oh, when they say art while traveling, I don't think this is what they mean. <laughs> I think they mean not in a truck once you and once you get to your destination. Okay, I don't know what to do with my paint water peeps. I also ended up with a lot of liquid inside each of my wells and I tried to dab that up with a paper towel and pull some out with a thirsty brush but nothing really got all of it so there is no rubber seal on this palette so it will just spill if I put it away like it is. I had enough of painting that day so this is the next day even though yeah I'm in the same clothes we're not going to talk about that. But this is the classic portable painter and you can see that the whales on the sides are a lot deeper. Also, I thought this would go over my leg and like not tilt to the side, but maybe it would higher up on my thigh, but the seat was there so I couldn't do that and I also needed a place to set my sketchbook. So I ended up putting it up towards my knees and then just squeezing that one side of the water well and that worked really well. So this one worked way better for this situation because I could squeeze that palette in there because the wells were deeper for the water. That was the biggest thing actually was those deep water wells because you could fill them however high or low you wanted and the fact that they were so deep still gave you plenty of water and they didn't threaten to spill out with every little bump and jump. So that's kind of a cool thing. I could not use that one side of the mixing palette because you can see my sketchbook is up there against it so it's kind of lifted up. So the other side had plenty of mixing space though so I wasn't worried about that. I also felt it was kind of hopeless to try and paint anything that was outside the window, again traveling at 70 miles an hour. So I just set up a couple of pretty ripe bananas we had in the truck. Yeah, they work pretty ugly. Anyway, they're on the blanket over there on the right side of the screen, just off screen, so you can't see them, but I have this little still life set up here in the truck, and that was kind of nice. The core paints, you know, they're, they're core. They worked flawlessly. That's just awesome. This is also the first time that I've used the brush that came with this portable painter. It was nice, except, let me see, it was nice in the sense that it had nice fine points, so any precision you wanted. I did have trouble, I was used to a brush holding a little bit more water, and this one does not hold a lot of liquid in it, so keep that in mind if you have this. Don't expect it to act like the brushes that you might use at home. There are no live interludes in this little recording batch here because nothing dramatic happened using this palette on the road. It just kind of stayed where I put it. Water didn't slosh out because it was down there deep enough, and it was super easy to use. All was good. All right, I know I took this whole art while traveling concept a little bit far, but it was all in fun and we did get to see what would happen if you tried to use these in a moving vehicle and that was kind of interesting. So here are my final conclusions. I do think this would work well in a moving object, I guess you could say, like maybe an airplane is smoother, that might work. But realistically, the idea of these palettes is to be able to take them with you without taking up a lot of space. And then once you get to your destination, then you can set them up and use them in a more traditional manner. Now, granted, the classic portable painter is supposed to go over your legs. So maybe if you have a lawn chair or something like that, you could try that. We just got here. I haven't had time to try that out yet, and I probably won't. The racing goes on like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and it's already, what, Thursday at 7.30 at night, so, and then we'll be traveling back, and I don't want to paint in the truck again. No, don't ask me to do that. Anyway, I think that it'll work well if you're in a lawn chair like that example, or you take these with you, and you get to get to your destination and then use them. I love the micro portable painter. I am definitely going to try that more at home because I don't think I have to travel once we get back home on the 18th for like another half a month. <laughs> anyway, there will be no video on this coming Tuesday. I just can't fit it in. I don't even know how. So sorry, just uh, look for the one on Friday. Definitely we'll have that one. So also, I know I already mentioned it, but I'm going to be using these a lot more at home and I will compare and contrast them and also tell you like how they hold up, how the little micro portable painter does, 
pretending as if we were in a situation where we traveled and we got to our destination and now we're using them. How is six colors going to work for me in the little micro? And things like that. So I will be answering those questions. It's just going to take some time. So I need to, uh, I need to be able to have that time. And then I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this adventure was fun for you. It was definitely an adventure for me. <laughs> Thank you to all my existing subscribers. You guys are awesome and have a great week.